So, my name is Stephen Murphy, and I'm a computer science teacher in Gwael Clos de Vwyra AG, which means that I have the um, uh, pleasure of teaching computer science through the medium of the Irish language. In November of last year, I founded the Computer Science Teachers Association of Ireland, and in a minute now we'll be talking um, about that. But first of all, anyway, just introduce you to the computer science, or sorry, the Leaving Cert Computer Science. So, about 16 months ago, um, over 200 schools in Ireland applied to become part of the pilot scheme that was advertised by the uh, NCCA, that's the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment. So, over 200 schools put in their applications and um, 40 schools were chosen. Now, the pilot scheme for the computer science is between uh, September 2018, so that's just September just gone, and to June 2020. So during that pilot time, no other school besides the 40 schools may run Leaving Certificate Computer Science. And of course, then after June 2020, any school wishing to offer the subject may, okay? So uh, now, the lucky thing is that uh, my school is a pilot school, and uh, pilot schools will be allowed to um, have fifth years next year um, to follow their current fifth year cohort. So we'll have, um, by when, in June 2020, we'll have one cohort out and we'll have one cohort in their juniors or in their uh, leaving cert and then that, the other schools then around the country can enter their uh, students into the programme. So this is a geo, uh, geographical map of um, the 40 schools around the country. And as to be expected with the population, Dublin gets the most, OK? You know, I don't know, there's about a quarter of the schools in the greater Dublin area. And that's to be expected. There's a few in Cork. And then, you know, you have the Midland schools, a couple up north, the border, and then the south, uh, southeast as well, OK? So there's 40 schools in total. Now. I would assume that the NCCA, when they made their selection criteria, not only decided on you know, the abilities of the teacher in the school to teach computer science, but also on other criteria, like the gender intake of the school, the number of students, whether it's a DESH or a non-DESH school, and indeed the um, teaching of the subject through the medium of the Irish language. So, the structure of the Leaving Certificate of Computer Science is broken up to three, in, into three strands. Now, we'll be going through this um, in a bit more detail now in a minute, but just for uh, information there. Uh, so, there's three strands, and this uh, was a grab from the NCCA Leaving Certificate of Computer Science specification. Now, that word specification is actually very important, and we'll talk about why it's important at the end. But just to move on, okay? So. There's four mini projects that the students must complete over the two-year course, and we'll go into the detail of them now in a sec. But you can see that strand one and strand two core concepts and practices and principles um, go through those four projects. So as you're teaching those four projects, um, practices and principles and core concepts, you'll be using things from those strands to teach the third strand, which is the practical component of it. So, Right, strand one, practices and principles. Some types of things that we have. Okay, so it's all about computational thinking. Problem solving, logical thinking, algorithmic thinking, okay? Continuing on then in strand one still, computers and society. So the relationship between machines and you know, humans, the environment, that sort of interaction, that sort of dynamic, okay? Uh, still in strand one then, we have Turing machines, which involves the internet, machine learning, artificial, artificial intelligence, and user-centered design. Uh, finally then, we have designing and developing then, which is design process, working as a team, communication and reporting, software development and management, and reflection. Now, Number two and number five there are the ones that I kind of see uh, going every day when the students are doing their work. They get an individual project, you know, each student does their own project, but, you know, there's, I have 12 students in front of me, and they're up, and they're going over to the other guy, and they're, you know, seeing what he did, and they're talking, and it's absolutely great. Like, I can sit down next to a student if they need help, and, you know, I suppose the strongest student in the class can go around and help other people because he's done his project. So, you know, it's a great thing to see, you know, and they're actually interested. They're, you know, they're talking about their work, and they're reflecting them by themselves then to um, 
to try and solve the problem. Strand two then is called core concepts, and you know you have stuff like abstraction, programming concepts, just like pseudocode, uh, sorting, searching, and algorithmic complexity. Um, continuing then in strand two, we have computer systems like the CPU, some basic electronics, operating system layers, web infrastructure, data types, uh, evaluation, and testing. Now, like. One thing that we've kind of learned from our CPD days that we do when we meet up every few months with the other 40 schools and the PDST, the professional body for developing uh, teachers, is that these concepts here should be taught through the lens of the practical stuff. So while, you know, traditionally you would have a PowerPoint about data types and a PowerPoint about whatever else, now what you're doing is you're giving them a project you're allowing them to explore data themselves, you're allowing them to explore like pseudocode themselves, flowcharts themselves, and then at the very end then you say, right, look lads, you know, this, what you did there now is an example of a flowchart or an example of pseudocode. So you're not explicitly saying that it's pseudocode or not explicitly saying that, you know, you're doing uh, data types, but then at the end then you can say, right lads, remember when you did that? that's what the data is, or that's what a flowchart is, or that's what pseudocode is. So it's all through the lens. Everything is taught through the lens of the practical component. Now, in strand three then, there's uh, four applied learning tasks, okay? And the first one is uh, the interactive information systems. So for example, user-centered design, web design, file systems, relational databases, design processes. Um, I spent the whole day up on the top floor uh, doing Django, and the reason why I was there for the whole day is because the stuff that I am learning today, that I learned today in Django, I will use to teach the kids in front of me applied learning task one. So, you know, I learned something today as well, okay? Applied learning task two is analytics. So, oh, user-centered design, okay, that's... I think that's a mistake, but anyway, that's grand. Um, basically, that analytics. You get your raw data, so for example, you might go out to the car park um, of the school, take all the year numbers from the cars, the registration plates, put it into an Excel file, read the Excel file into Python, and then use the programming techniques then that you've learned to crunch the numbers, basically, okay? Um, applied learning task three then, modeling and simulation. So things like modeling, simulation, abstraction, algorithms. And then finally then, applied learning task four is embedded systems, where you know, you're computing inputs and outputs, computer systems, and finally the design process. Now, um, with an embedded system, you actually have the freedom to choose whether you want to do a micro bit, a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino, or whatever you want. You know, it's fully flexible. So, how is this going to be assessed? The four assessment learning tasks that I just described there, they are worth zero marks. But in January of sixth year, the department will release a project that will be worth 30% of their um, final grade in Leaving Certificate Computer Science. And that project will be based on the four assess um, applied learning tasks which are then based on the practices and principles and core concepts. So there's kind of a stacking up, if you will, okay? And then finally then, 70% of the final grade then will be a summative an exam on a computer. Now, the computer-based exam, it's not, up, it's not set in stone. It could be pen and paper, but that's, you know, that's, that will be solved soon. Now, just before we get into where Python fits into this, um, I mentioned before that um, it's now called a specification. The word syllabus is being phased out in second level schools and now it's all about specifications. In specifications, no longer will there be a depth of treatment given to um, teachers in, a, in the booklet. They'll just be given learning outcomes and it's up to the teacher then to interpret the, uh, the specification then and teach accordingly. Now, that gives the adva great advantage of being flexible but it also gives the kind of disadvantage then of um, teachers not being 100% clear about what's going to be on the exam, which gives, and especially in the new subjects, that becomes a problem. So how does Python fit, in, fit into this? Python is one of two programming languages that are allowed during the pilot scheme, 
After the pilot scheme in 2020, there may or may not be other programming languages allowed, but for the moment, it's Python and JavaScript. So Python then is central then to the two year, the stuff that they're going to, be over, going to be doing over the two years. So Python, you know, you have your basic Python, you know, whatever. You have your turtles, which are definitely going to be used for algorithmic thinking. You have Django, which I just learned today. Uh, fit, Python can be used to fit into MySQL as well. You can use Python to program a micro bit for the embedded systems, and you can use pandas then for data analysis. Now, maybe the pandas are a bit advanced for the data analysis, but again, you know, it's an option. So, what type of thing are we supposed to see in an assessed learning task? So, for example, this is an ALT uh, simulation for, the, for a lotto game that one of my students built. Okay, and you can see, you know, there's a good bit chunk, a good chunk of code there. So, what does this code do? <coughs> well, for the lotto game, it generates, um, it generates a, a ticket, which is four numbers long. It then draws four balls out of a drum, and if the ticket is the same as the lotto, then you win. Now, then there's little additions to that as well. There's things like a bonus ball system, if you get three of the four numbers, and also, um, instead of the user inputting their numbers, let's also try and get a randomly generated ticket. So that's, the type, that's an example now of a project that a student could produce. Um, just on the other half of that then, for the, um, or for the modeling part of ALT3, you could build a tax calculator. So the user could input their gross um, wages, and by passing through USCs and income taxes and PRSIs and everything like that, the user could actually output their, um, their net wages. What you could do then, a little, nice little addition that I plan on doing with my students then when this comes up, I plan on incrementing, um, no, it's not in this uh, function here, it's actually in, another fun it's in that other function. If the user inputs 30,000 euros as their gross wage, it'll calculate the tax and whatnot, and then it'll increment then the gross wage by 1,000, and it'll do the exact same thing, and it'll do that 10 times, so the, the student can then see how their taxes change as their income goes up, and the percentage loss then to them for every, part of their, um, for every increment then of 1,000 euros. That data then could be exported into a CSV file or an Excel file, and then graphed. So, this project here could actually um, cover a bit of the data analysis as well. You know, it's not to say that you can't, there can't be overlaps. So, the Computer Science Teachers Association of Ireland I set up last year in November, and to date we have over 750 members. Uh, we link people in primary, secondary, tertiary, industrial and voluntary sectors interested in CS education. We're an entirely voluntary organization ourselves. It's completely free to join. You don't even have to be a teacher. You don't have to be a computer science teacher. Anyone can join if you're interested in upskilling. Um, the first thing we provided was a Google Drive full of CS teaching resources suitable for all levels. You know, we've thousands of files organized into folders and subfolders that teachers can take stuff that are appro that's appropriate for their class, and they're free to modify it. There's no problems. Everyone contributes. So, um, one thing I really like, and one thing that I noticed before I set up the association, is that Ireland never had a computer science subject, but other countries did. So, you know, I thought, why don't we import other people's resources into a pool? Irish teachers can then take those resources out of that pool, modify them for the R specification, and then, um, and then after a few years, once we've built up our own resources, we contribute back to the pool. And then other teachers from other countries take out R resources as well. And um, this is just an example of some of the uh, countries that we have links with. Now, um, recently then, we've launched a um, monthly uh, journal slash magazine that's called Reina Revolus, The Age of Computer Science. Uh, this journal contains a mini literature reviews, articles written by teachers and academics on their teaching experiences, and code snippets for the Leaving Certificate Computer Science Applied Learning Tasks. So just as an example there, um, this is a, an article written by an Irish teacher, Irish CS teacher, working in South Africa. 
Um, this is one of our mini literature reviews on the zipper principle used in computer science teaching. And finally then, we just kind of, you know, if any third level institution wishes to advertise their courses, um, advertise their courses with us, it's completely free. You know, they just send in what they want and I'll put it into the magazine. Then the code snippets then, I suppose, that's what you know, the teachers get most use out of. So um, it ranges from the very simple to a very complex. So um, I'd go away and I'd research how to do something that maybe I think would be interesting and then I'd put it into the magazine. So here we have a countdown timer, which you know, might seem a bit trivial, but I'm sure someone could either use that or modify it depending on what they wanted to do. Uh, finally, then we, are, then we have like a longer piece of code, which is actually something I built recently. It's a poker game simulator. So what happens is a random hand of poker is randomly generated, and the code then checks whether you have a pair, two pair, a straight, four of a kind, three of a kind, four of a flush, whatever, okay? Um, so I write things and I share them with other teachers, and as you can see, there's a fair chunk of code there. Okay, so the Computer Science Teachers Association of Ireland and Python Ireland, um, as Nicholas said, uh, I contacted him first looking for a person to proofread the notes that I made, uh, computer science notes that I made through Irish over the summer, and he very nicely found someone for me who did it. So a, Python, a, Pyth a Pythonista who's fluent as Gaelga, a rare bird. So that's the first link that we have, and this is an example now, a very simple example of um, how Irish is used in computer science. It's the exact same as English, except, for example, we have a list here of turhi, and then we have, you know, a list of turhi as strings, we have glossary, which are vegetables, and then we have a single fruit then, ool, as the single list, okay? And then you just go through, you know, you go turhi.append, su taloon, print turhi. Turhi.extend, glossary, print turhi. Turhi.insert, to tara, print turhi. It's the exact same commands, except you're using Irish words instead of English words. So, um, if you'd like to contact me, that's my email, that's our, I won't call it a website, it's a web page because it's quite basic. Um, this is our Twitter and that's our Facebook. Before I finish up, you know, I'd like to say just, obviously I don't need to tell you the importance of computer science coming into second level education in Ireland, you know, you're all computer scientists, Pythonistas, whatever. Like, it's not important just because it's coming in and it's computer science and you're computer scientists. Like, in Ireland, we've been trying to get computer science in since the 70s, you know? And there's been attempts. Some of them have just completely fallen flat. Other, than, other ones then have kind of tried to shoehorn computer science into the Leaving Cert Honours Maths syllabus as well, which didn't really work. So there was multiple attempts, 70s, 80s, 90s, to get it work, and finally now in 2018, we have one. So that's the kind of thing now, you know, that's, you know, we've had 50 year, 40 or 50 years of trying to do something, and we finally did it, so hopefully it will be a success. Um, so thank you very much, and I'll be happy to take any questions or comments you have. That's that, 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 uh, you go first, I go first, whatever. So uh, here uh, we have uh, hopefully a, the, the flagship event of, uh, of a Python Island and uh, you can access uh, quite a, a good bunch of Pythonistas. Uh, my, my, my question is, um, what can we do for, for you? What, what kind of assistance the, uh, our Python community can do for your project? Uh, that, that's it, what, what can we expect? Like, I mean, you know, if someone in this room or someone in Python Ireland would like to share their two cents on teaching computer science or Python for a magazine, that would be great. You know, I wouldn't expect anyone to write a big article or, you know, one that had heavy citations or anything like that. That's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is I'd like, you know, maybe three pages with a few images or whatever about your opinion on computer science teaching, you know, anything to do with you know, that would be of, re do you think of, re would be of relevance to our members, that's what I'd like to get out of um, Python Ireland. You know, if anyone has an opinion that they'd like to share. We have a readership of over 750 people. I'd like to get a kind of a conversation or a debate going. 
I, I am very curious, is, is the ECC, EC, the computer driving license thing, I remember doing it um, yeah. during second level and it was basically teaching Microsoft products. Yeah. Is that going away in favor of something like this? Um, ECDL, like, it's not going, I mean, okay, I don't actually know the, statist the statistics on it. Um, personally, I think ECDL is a very good qualification. You know, the kids coming to us, you know, some of them don't know how to turn on a computer because all they have is phones and tablets. You know, they don't know, like, the box underneath this desk, you have to push the button to turn it on. Like, I see that many, many times. Um, so, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's going away, sorry, I don't know if it's going away, but um, it, I think it definitely, there's a place for it to give them the ICT skills, the IT skills, and then maybe they could introduce coding as part of the junior certificate as well, which would give them the maybe, not how to use a computer, but how to program a computer as well. So they could get both ends, the front end and the back end. So um, did I answer your question? Okay. Yes. Yeah. What, has the, what has the gender ratio been like in the classes and how many of the 40 trial schools are all girls? Um, I don't know, but I actually, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't give you the figure, but there, I, from the people that I've spoken to, my friends in the 40 schools, there's absolutely, um, there's absolutely um, schools with all girls in it. Um, I think, I believe one's in Tipperary, but don't quote me on that. I um, don't know the exact ratio though, I'm sorry. I'm just wondering because my all girls convent school back in the day was really negative about anything of that sort. Um, as I said, you know, I, I, I don't know, but I, I definitely think the PDST and CCA would try to get as even a balance as can. I couldn't tell you exactly how close it is. Um, mine's along similar lines, but I, I don't know if it's a question for you, but is it going to be a compulsory subject for schools? No, it's going to be an elective um, subject like biology, chemistry, history, economics, relieving cert. So it's going to be terrible for girls' schools. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, you never... It's like, not a question for you, but I just wonder in general, do you know if something's been done about that? Because when you hear the talk, do you know, like trying to get a physics class in a girls' school is impossible sometimes. They won't put it on. So just uh, as feedback yeah. from the community. I know the UK have yeah. serious problems with computer science at A levels. Like it's actually, you know, in terms of uptake, percentage uptake, it's the worst one in the UK. Yeah. In terms of if we're in second in second level. So just if, if you can feed that back somewhere from like the from the, from this community, that it would be a really good idea to think about that now. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like I mean, I you know, like I feel that you need to make a push to get you know, girls into computer science and STEM and, you know, like into STEAM and stuff like that. Into the school in the first place, though. You would do be, need to yeah. make a push. Like, you, you, you do need to make a special so effort, like I feel. Most girls, all girls schools, you'll find science isn't compulsory in junior search. Yeah. And then it just doesn't happen. And then, yeah. Yeah. Hi there. Um, like many people, I've uh, helped out a bit with uh, Coder Dojo. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was uh, quite an eye-opener when I uh, was helping some teenagers uh, coding Python. Um, I'm not the best person to be talking to beginners. I've been coding yeah. <laughs> for over 20 years and coding Python for over 10 years. Yeah. And the number of things I've forgotten um, and, and how you get started on this. So um, my question to you is, uh, how can those of us who might be a little bit longer in the tooth um, help and at what stage in, the, in, this, in this process can we uh, help to encourage this? I think this is a fantastic initiative um, and uh, for myself I'm just uh, wondering what's the right point at which I can uh, constructively jump in. Um, I mean like you know look, I mean Coda Dojo is fantastic and like the CSTI has you know strong links with Coda Dojo. Um, like I mean I heard actually a very good story of someone um, you know last week I was talking to them you know, do you play a mu musical instrument by any chance? Sorry? Do you play a musical instrument? Or can you? Can you? No. no. Um, so, I w you know, like a story he told me was, okay, try and learn a musical instrument and put, your shoes in the, put yourself in the shoes of the beginner. And then you'll kind of maybe be able to think about how the kids then who are beginning coding feel that, you know, that, that, you, know you, can, you, you basically start off from a beginner level in the musical instrument. They're starting off as a um, as a beginner in coding, like as you said, you know, for people who are longer in the tooth than myself, you know, it's difficult to do that. But you just kind of have to remember that that's where they're starting off with. 
Oh, that's actually, that's actually that's something I did meant, mean to mention. Um, I would like to say that the PDST, the professional group for helping teachers develop, have been absolutely amazing. You know, they've given us CPD days, they've given us webinars, they've given us a folder of Python code, you know, and different activities we can do with the kids. They've been absolutely amazing. Um, I have a Python event next month, and in January then I have a three-day um, CPD session with the PDST where we kind of learn more about maybe JavaScript, for example, or something like that, like they're leaving no stone unturned. We have a great communication network. We use Slack, we use emails, we use everything to communicate. It's been really, really excellent. I've had no fault with them. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I'm curious about this replacement of the syllabus with a specification. Is this just computer science no. or is this more, that's more um, broadly? Yeah, okay. so the syllabus now, the syllabi now we're go are going to be an endangered species. They're right. going out of fashion. Specifications are the okay. new buzzwords, basically. Um, just as biology, for example, biology now has a syllabus, but um, in a couple of years' time, when the new curriculum comes out, it's going to be a specification. Right. And the, the specifications don't have the depth of treatment, whereas the, uh, the syllabi do. It actually sounds quite like what we currently call a syllabus at third level, where you yes. have learning outcomes. Outcomes, defined. yes. That, and and, and that's in the that key. situation, you have the lecturer interpreting what the outcomes, how they're yeah. achieved, but they're at the advantage that they also set the examination. Yes. Uh, for a state exam, it seems like a dangerous practice to have the teacher interpreting what is meant yes. and required I, from learning outcomes. And you know, like you could say, like, oh, sure, why don't, you know, why don't I teach too much? That's also a danger. Because if you teach too much, you're yeah. wasting time, you're taking time away from another part of the subject. Um, um, so, you know, that's like, you could either teach too little or teach too much, and both times you're letting the kids down, because if you teach too much, yeah. you're stealing away from another part, of a sub or another part of the course which needs attention. So that's the problem with a lack of a depth of treatment. And just a quick follow-up. Uh, yep. is, uh, is the uh, share between Python and Java, is that down to the... Teacher? Yes, the decision? choice. The, the teachers do have you, the choice. Do you know you can, what that proportion is? Oh, um, the, anecdotal, the schools? anecdotally, everyone I've speak, spoken to is doing Python. There might be one or two doing JavaScript. So it's, uh, but at least it's majority as far as... Oh, yeah, the vast, I would, and I would say the vast majority of that. So there's a junior cert coding um, course out now. I think that's still in the pilot scheme. I'm not too sure. I think fi there's 50 schools around the country that are doing junior cert coding. I'm one, we're one, you know, Gwell Colossal, is one of them. Um, so that's the kind of bridge, but, you know, again, like some schools run their own coding things, you know, once a week, but there is a, for there is a formal um, course out there for junior search. So, yeah. Are you okay? All right, good job. Thanks a million.